Hello, I'm Ann Simpson. And I'm Justin Atkinson. Thanks for joining us. Well, Sandy Dingle was officially sworn in as mayor during Monday's St. Paul Park City Council meeting. Dingle will serve a two-year term. Before the election, Dingle was appointed mayor after former mayor Keith Frankie was elected to the Minnesota House of Representatives. Also during Monday's St. Paul Park Council meeting, a new council member was sworn in. Let's meet Tanya Foote. To the best of my judgment and abilities, so, so help me God. Great, thank you so much. You're in. I'm from a small town in Missouri, and Missouri, not Missouri, but Missouri. And I think it's just important to, to know about your community. I think it's important to contribute. And selfishly, I want to learn a little bit more about my community as well as equally give back to the community. So it's kind of a balance. I've lived in St. Paul Park for 21 years. I've been on the uh, Public Safety Commission for several years. I chaired it. I've just enjoyed the topics that our commission has dealt with for the last few years. I'd like to see more, more housing and more businesses. So I'd like to see a few more mom and pop stores in the area. I think it's going to be a good experience for me, and, and I really am, it's not a cliche, but I really am looking forward to this. I've had to give up something for to be on the council um, because I'm a member of my church's handbell group, and I have to give that up because we practice on Monday nights. So that was a tough decision, but I don't regret it, and I think this will be well worth that sacrifice, if you will. Foote took over former council member Jennifer Cheeseman's seat, who resigned in August. Her term will end in 2020. Well, officers in Cottage Grove made an arrest earlier this week with a possible connection to several vehicle break-ins that have happened in the area. Four teens were booked and fingerprinted at the county jail after being found walking in the area of 79th Street and Jeffrey Avenue. Charges are pending further investigation. If your vehicle has been tampered with or you've had items stolen that were not reported to the police, you should contact the PD. The winners of the Holiday Lights and Decorating Contest in Cottage Grove were announced this week. This year, 18 homes are nominated, which is the biggest number of nominees ever. The winning homes were chosen by a panel of judges. Jim Workus and Bill Davidson's display at Manual Avenue South was a winner for their colorful home. And Wade Parrott won for his decorating efforts at 6220 Hearthstone Avenue South. A full list of nominated lighted homes can be found on the city's website. And speaking of brightly decorated homes, recently we visited an avid lighting master in St. Paul Park. Well, starting right after Halloween, I uh, start to pull everything down out of the attic and I start to create the winter wonderland. This is probably my sixth year doing this. The first year I did it, I just put lights up around the house and I had no yard decor whatsoever. It was just lighting the house and the kids got such joy out of it that it has uh, expanded every year since then. My PVC hoops and those are some of the, probably my most fun that I enjoy making. And then you grab your youngest and you tell them to spin the pole. This stuff is kind of expensive when you buy it in the store. So, you know, I like to look on the internet and find creative ideas that other people have done on their own yards with PVC or, or lattice or other items that they use. And so I take kind of creation from those and then just incorporate it into my own set year after year. We have the toy nutcrackers, the owl that's right up there. It's actually very high up. I always think of that as not as a waterfall. I kind of think of it as a moving spider. Most part, we should get a Santa that goes in there, so then he'll be flying the sleigh. I enjoy lighting the house the same way, but when it comes to the yard, the yard is a blank canvas every year, and items end up in different spots every year. The big one for the year, linking the two yards together, and this whole block will be ready to go here and in full holiday cheer. I can get power right there. Good. All right, coming down. And I got power running to the cord. I do it because I love the joy it brings to the community. 
you know, as I set this up, neighbors walk by and they, they take a look at it and they're like, oh, that's a new piece this year. Oh, you did that different this year. I and mean, I just love kind of the joy and tension it brings to the holiday season. And I really, really enjoy the joy it brings as people drive by the house and they slow down and they look in awe at just how lit up this yard really becomes, especially with having young children now and the joy and magic that they get out of it every year seeing the house light up, seeing the inside of the house light up, and then just the joy that they get when they, they see the presents under the tree Christmas morning. is uh, It's worth its weight in gold. You can stop by Andy's home at 808 Portland Avenue to check out his display. The outdoor refrigerated ice rink of the Healthy Sports Center opened last week despite temperatures in the 40s. The rink offers open skating Sunday through Thursday from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. and Fridays and Saturdays until 10 p.m. Rental skates are available for $6. The annual community glow-in-the-dark sledding event in St. Paul Park is scheduled for December 28th. The event organized by the St. Paul Park Parks and Recreation Commission will have free glow sticks and refreshments from 5 until 7 p.m. in the fire hall. Sledding will take place on the hill next to City Hall. Skating lessons are being offered at the Cottage Grove Ice Arena this winter. Classes are designed to help prepare skaters for all ice sports, and lessons are available for participants of all ages and abilities. Skaters must pre-register for classes. If you've ever wanted to try out a virtual reality experience, then the Park Grove Library has an interesting event planned for you. On December 21st, from 6 until 7 p.m., there will be a free virtual reality demonstration. Participants will use the library's new virtual reality equipment to explore underwater sea scenes and paint three-dimensional objects. The equipment was purchased as part of the library's focus on creating and promoting experiential learning. Since 2015, the city of Woodbury has celebrated Coins for Canines, a week-long fundraiser for the police department's canine unit. The program, which now lasts a month, has partnered with businesses across the city thanks to the work of a tireless Woodbury public safety booster. Bruce was a Woodbury firefighter and ultimately firefighter medic when that program started for 22 years. Three years ago, Bruce passed away unexpectedly. When I called 911, the first two firefighter medics that came in immediately did their job. And then I hear this come from one of the first responders, the medics. Oh my God, this is Bruce Stafford. They continued um, to take care of me. They continue to check up on me. They just continue to care. How do you say thank you to that? How do you give gratitude? I literally got it from above. And, and I know it came from Bruce and he went, dog. He was a dog lover. Donna is a truly amazing woman. She, uh, she kind of goes nonstop when it comes to raising uh, raising money for our canine units. Uh, we have been very blessed to have her. Last year was $6,060, which was up from the first year that we did it in 2015, which was $1,910. $10,000 will help build the fund so that we can continue sending two officers, canine handlers, to annual trainings that they would not normally be able to attend. Having the ability to go to different trainings, whether it's in-state or out-state national trainings, um, we get to learn from the best of the best from around the country and around the world. New trends, new training techniques, new philosophies, we can incorporate that into our unit. I'd just like to thank Donna for all the hard work that she's done. She is, uh, she's truly an inspiration and, uh, and, and what she has done and, and what she's accomplished and what she continues to accomplish. So kudos go out to her. It makes me proud of living in this community. It speaks about how valuable our canine program is, that people want to support it. By the time we get to the end of the week, there'll be 80 to 100 boxes out. No matter where you go, you're going to see them. But if by chance you don't, you can go onto the Woodbury Community Foundation website and make a donation online 
to the Bruce Stafford Public Safety Legacy Fund. Contributions to the Coins for Canines Fund allowed the department to purchase the city's fourth dog, Canine Rogan, in 2015. Residents can donate to any of the Coins for Canines boxes in Woodbury through December 20th. Thin ice and areas of open water may be found all winter at Battle Creek and Colby Lakes in Woodbury this year. There are aeration systems in the lakes to circulate water to keep the fish alive. There are thin ice signs posted as a warning to keep off the ice. Now here's a quick look at some upcoming meetings you might want to attend. And with that, we wrap up another edition of Weekly Wire. If you missed an episode or would like to watch this one again, go online to swctc.org. Click on the Watch Programming button found on the lower portion of the homepage, then select Weekly Wire. And of course, you can always stay up to date with us on social media on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Before we go, you know, Justin, we had some rough weather this week on the roads. Yeah, you know, this is a good opportunity to put some winter survival gear in our cars. Yeah, you never know when something might happen. It probably won't, but it's always good, you know, to have like a blanket, some extra gloves. Try some flashlight, some batteries, extra batteries for the flashlights. Yeah, maybe. You know, jumper know, cables. Just things that can, you know, help you out if you happen to have to stay in your vehicle for a little bit before help can arrive. So yeah. it's a good idea. I yeah. got my kit already. Ah, very good. You're probably thinking about maybe doing it. I am definitely, after this conversation, I know it's time for me to remember to do that as well. All right, let's all be prepared. <laughs> See you next week.